Buying a CMOS battery is usually a simple task of picking up a new coin cell battery for a few dollars. The battery in this laptop is a little different, having positive and negative leads leading to a connector. When I found the cost of this particular one costing anywhere from six to ten dollars, I wondered if I could recycle the lead and connectors. I'll see how that goes next. I'll start with removing the shrink tubing protecting the battery and leads. I'm not sure what it looks like under the shrink tubing, so I have to be careful not to accidentally cut either the positive or negative wires. Once I can lift up some of the shrink tubing, I'll be able to see what to avoid cutting and it'll make removing the rest a lot easier. It's a pretty simple design. They basically spot welded tabs on both sides of the battery with the positive and negative leads extending from each tab into a connector. Now what I really need to do is remove each of the tabs from each side of the battery so that I can use them on another battery. What makes this a challenge is that the battery is very small and hard to hold on to while trying to slice through the spot weld with the razor. I eventually found a better long nose plier and used that with a utility knife which made removing the tabs a lot easier. I also wanted to confirm that this ML1220 battery is a 3 volt battery. This means I can replace it with a standard CR2032 battery, also 3 volts, but has a lot higher capacity. I had thought about soldering the tabs to a new battery then decided that maybe a battery holder would make it easier to change batteries in the future, but then I came to the conclusion that the battery won't get banged around much and the next change will probably be years from now, so I decided to tape the tabs onto the battery. In this clip, I'm taping the tabs to a CR2032 coin cell, but later found the CR2032 was too large in diameter to fit in the limited space in the laptop. I switched to a smaller CR1620, taping the tabs in the exact same way, and this battery fit a lot better into the same space. Something I felt was important when taping the tabs to the battery was to separate the tabs with a strip of tape in between. This should be enough to prevent the tabs from coming together and causing a short. In this situation, since there won't be any pulling on the wire, there should be no wear and tear to the tape. Here's a 30 second time lapse of the reassembly. It's a pretty simple one. Plug in the battery, install the top cover, use a small needle nose to get the touchpad ribbon cable in, 6 PH1 screws, install the keyboard and its ribbon cable, and not shown are 4 more PH1 screws underneath. I didn't get it in the video, but I've already set the date and time in the BIOS to the current day and 1am. I'll disconnect the laptop from all power and there's also no laptop battery plugged in. I'll power up the laptop and if the CMOS battery is working, the time should be about 10 minutes since I set it. On the other hand, if the CMOS battery isn't working, the date and time should revert back to zeros and there should be a BIOS prompt asking how to proceed. The time is just about correct, it's hard to get it in focus, but it's currently showing 1.08 AM. I hope this video can be useful for your computer maintenance needs. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section down below. That's all I have for now and I'll catch you in the next video.